From a 120 million pound disaster off the coast of England during a fierce windstorm and a daring helicopter rescue near a limestone quarry in North Wales, to a $700 million environmental disaster that was the worst in New Zealand's history, and the world-famous ship that blocked the Suez Canal and crippled the global economy. Here are some of the world's most expensive container ship disasters. In January of 2007, the MSC Napoli found herself sailing through the English Channel en route from Belgium to South Africa. The 905-foot, 62,000-ton vessel seemed invulnerable. But then, gale force winds from windstorm Kirill tried to send the ship and crew down to Davy Jones's locker. On January 18th, Napoli got caught in Force 11 winds, or about 72 miles per hour. They were hauling 2,300 containers containing explosives, weed killer, car engines, fertilizer, vodka, wine, coffee, and frozen ducks. Oh, and about 3,800 tons of oil. So, when the winds caused catastrophic damage to its hull, the crew knew they couldn't let her sink. All that cargo would cause untold damage to the environment. Well, all except the frozen ducks. The crew sent out a distress call while idling off the coast of Brittany, France, and all 26 members were airlifted to safety by the UK Coast Guard. But the winds made it impossible for Napoli to shelter along the French coast, and they asked if the listing ship could be towed into UK waters. The original plan was to tow the vessel into Portland Harbour off the south coast of Dorset, but the risk of it sinking was too great and the journey too far. Instead, they beached the container ship in Lime Bay on the Jurassic Coast. For all their efforts, 114 containers still fell off the ship's deck, with 80 of them washing ashore in the UK. It took two and a half years to unload, salvage, and clean the Napoli disaster. In total, it cost the British government more than 120 million pounds. The MV Express Pearl was a Singapore-registered cargo ship that entered service in February of 2021. Three months later, she was part of the worst environmental catastrophe in Sri Lanka's history when a fire broke out on the deck and sank the ship. At the time, the Pearl was carrying over 1,400 containers, including 25 tons of nitric acid, among other cosmetics and harmful chemicals. On May 20th, while anchored off the coast of Sri Lanka, a fire began on board the ship. The 25-person crew evacuated, and firefighters did everything they could to quell the flames. But monsoon force winds, not to mention the highly flammable and poisonous cargo, made getting close enough impossible. Then, the explosions started. People could hear explosions over the weekend, echoing through the thick cloud of black smoke about nine miles off the coast of Colombo, Sri Lanka's capital city. Every passing moment allowed more harmful chemicals to spill into the ocean. The beaches were coated in microplastics, and you could see oil slicks floating atop the surrounding ocean. Sadly, turtles, fish, and birds began washing ashore, as the pellets used to make plastic bags are fatal to marine life. The Pearl was carrying 25 containers worth of the stuff. Local fishing economies were hit pretty hard, as fishermen couldn't sail out to sea. Denzel Fernando, one of the fishing union heads, said the fishing ban would affect 4,200 Sri Lankan families. According to Crawford & Co., an insurance company specializing in marine loss, the Pearl Fire cost between 30 and 50 million dollars, including the lost cargo and the lost ship. As for the environmental damage, you can't put a price tag on that. But before we continue, we have a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a turn-based MMO battle game that you can play for free on your phone or PC. You've probably played these types of games before, but what sets Raid apart for me is that you never run out of exciting things to do. Some mobile games get old and tiring after a while, but Raid pretty much guarantees non-stop action and huge battles. You can head to the dungeons and face off against deadly bosses, conquer the campaign, dive into high-stakes PvP fights against other players, and, well, you get the picture. Personally, it's the big boss fights that I love the most. They're always super challenging to defeat, but also are the most rewarding when you do so. 
To kick off the new year, Raids released a fresh update with a bunch of awesome new features, including a new season of the Forge Pass, the Plarium Points program where you can earn in-game goodies including a legendary champion and more. In preparation for Raids' fourth anniversary later this year, the team is launching the Titan event, allowing you to earn anniversary points by playing. There are some incredible rewards up for grabs, so be sure you don't miss out. If you use our special link down below or scan the QR code on screen, you'll get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. But there's more. MMA and pro wrestling star Ronda Rousey has made the leap into the world of Raid with her very own champion, which you can unlock simply by opening Raid seven days before February 20th. To celebrate her arrival, you can use promo code RAIDRONDA to get a bunch of useful in-game items to help level her up. Just enter the promo code in-game and all the goodies will be sent straight to your inbox. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to help support this channel and start playing Raid Shadow Legends today. Alright, now back to the video. On April 4th of 2012, a cargo ship named the St. John's was forced ashore by gale force winds while anchored at a pier in North Wales. The crew was loading limestone from a nearby quarry when the violent winds pushed the ship onto the nearby rocks. And there it stayed for several days as crews worked to empty the fuel. Two lifeboats and a helicopter braved the high winds to rescue the seven-person crew. Five crew members made it off the ship that night. But when the winchman lowered himself to rescue the others, the winch broke, leaving all three stranded on the boat. It didn't take long to fix the winch and rescue the other three, but now they had another problem. Fuel leaked into the water, and with 24,000 liters of diesel on board, crews had to act fast to avoid an environmental catastrophe. Luckily, the choppy water broke up the little fuel that spilled, and the Environment Agency of Wales called the overall impact minimal. Salvage crews spent the next six weeks cutting the ship into pieces and hauling them to be recycled or sold for scrap. Now, we can't put an exact price on the disaster, but we can safely assume it cost the German owners millions of dollars. The St. John's was actually the second maritime accident at this limestone loading dock. Six months prior, the Swanland ran into trouble in the rough water and sank with all its limestone. But hey, that's better than toxic chemicals and acid, right? On March 6th of 2018, while en route from Singapore to Suez, a fire erupted aboard the Maersk Konam, an 1,100-foot container ship traveling through the Arabian Sea. A smoke alarm alerted the crew to trouble in the number three cargo hold. As hard as they fought, the 27-person crew couldn't put the fire out. A distress call went out ASAP, but the blaze forced the crew to abandon ship in their life rafts. Only 23 of them made it out. Four perished in the fire, and one succumbed to their injuries in the hospital. Firefighters battled the fire for over a month while tow ships dragged the vessel toward a port in Dubai for offloading. A spokesperson for Maersk Line said the fire remained under control and evoked the law of general average. In maritime law, general average means that all stakeholders in a ship's cargo will evenly share the cost of damages when part of the cargo is sacrificed to save the whole. For example, if the crew has to jettison a container full of Louis Vuitton bags, or else the whole ship goes down, everyone else will help to pay for the loss. So how much money are we talking about here? According to the British International Freight Association, or the BIFA, the insurance claims from the fire were in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Everyone involved reported a chlorine-like smell in the smoke, telling investigators the ship was carrying a dangerous oxidizing compound called sodium dichloroisocyanurate dihydrate, or SDID. The ship was carrying 1,000 tons of SDID when it set sail, a chemical known for self-decomposition when stowed in bulk. While no direct cause was ever determined, many point to the SDID as the culprit. On October 5th of 2011, the MV Rena was traveling around the northeast coast of New Zealand, from the city of Napier to the port of Tauranga. But disaster struck as the ship neared its destination. 
While traveling around 17 knots, or just under 20 miles per hour, the cargo ship ran aground in the Astrolabe Reef. The Rena was carrying 1,300 containers and over 1,700 tons of fuel when it crashed into the reef, leading to the worst maritime environmental disaster in New Zealand's history. Apparently, the master and crew decided to divert from the proper voyage plan, aka take a shortcut. They didn't have the best navigational and watchkeeping practice on board, and gross oversight regarding the vessel's safety features led to the crash. They spilled about 200 tons of fuel into the ocean, and a substantial amount of cargo fell overboard. Things got worse several months later when rough waters and swells upwards of 6 meters snapped the hull in half. In the early morning of January 8th, between 200 and 300 more containers fell into the ocean when the ship split in two. By April 4th, the entire ship was underwater. A large-scale salvage operation lasted until April of 2016 and cost the New Zealand government $700 million. Unfortunately, they didn't get everything, and further expeditions would cost millions more. In the years that followed, the wreck of the Rena became a diving attraction while environmental committees argued over removing it. Some believe they should leave it in an environmentally benign state, while others want it gone completely. On July 8th of 2012, 23 crew members and two civilian passengers boarded the MSC Flaminia, a German-flagged cargo ship docked in the port of Charleston, South Carolina. She was bound for Belgium and carried over 2,800 containers, 149 of which contained hazardous material, improperly stored hazardous material. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, about a thousand miles from North America, a fire broke out in Hold 4 forcing the crew and passengers to abandon ship. They had difficulty launching the lifeboat, which sent panic down everyone's spine as the fire expanded. One man was severely injured, and he needed medical attention ASAP. Thankfully, they lowered the lifeboats and made it safely off the ship, but now they were floating in the open ocean. Her Majesty's Coast Guard heard the distress call and broadcast an emergency alert to all nearby ships. Luckily for the Flaminia's crew, another German-flagged ship, the DS Crown, was there to save the day. Sadly, one crew member was still missing and presumed dead, and our injured man passed away on the DS Crown. The fire was still burning when a Dutch salvage vessel arrived to assess the situation. The fire raged in holds 4, 5, and 6, but most of the ship was still in repairable shape. The Dutch towed the Flaminia towards Europe, but she sat in flaming limbo about 250 miles off the coast of England. No European country wanted to give the boat permission to enter their waters. Finally, on August 15th, Germany took responsibility for the ship and allowed Flaminia to enter its waters. Investigators determined the fire started because of a mislabeled container full of the chemical DVB-80, which they used to make plastic resins. It should have been labeled as an explosive hazard and stored on deck. Instead, it was labeled as a marine toxin and loaded in the cargo hold. The MOL Comfort was one of 12 cargo ships designed by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries in the mid-2000s. She was designed to carry 8,000 20-foot containers worldwide, but crashed in the Indian Ocean. On June 17th of 2018, while heading from Singapore to Saudi Arabia, the MOL Comfort got caught in some nasty weather about 200 miles off the coast of Yemen. The waves were nearly 6 meters tall, and the wind gusted at Storm Force 7, or between 32 and 38 miles per hour. A crack formed in the bottom plates beneath cargo hold 6 and moved up the side until the vessel snapped in half. The 26 crew members, a mix of Russians, Ukrainians, and Filipinos, abandoned ship in their life rafts. They could only sit and watch the massive cargo ship drift apart like a child's toy. Somehow, both halves stayed afloat, and most of the cargo remained intact. The conversation shifted from salvaging a sinking ship to towing both halves back to shore. On June 24th, four tugboats decided to tow the bow half to land first, as the stern half was apparently taking on water. 
Three days later, the stern half sank about 4,000 meters deep, taking 1,700 containers and 1,500 tons of fuel down with it. Nearly a month after she split in two, the bow section finally sank about 3,000 meters deep. Some consider the MOL Comfort the worst shipping disaster in history, costing insurers upwards of $400 million. 100 companies filed lawsuits against Mitsubishi, claiming the accident and loss of cargo were due to a design flaw. Just when the early 2020s couldn't get any worse, the MV Ever Given went and got stuck in the Suez Canal on March 23rd of 2021. Described as a skyscraper-sized container ship, the Ever Given's bow got wedged against the canal's east wall while its stern got stuck on the western wall. According to the experts, they had never heard of anything like this in the canal's 150-year history. The Suez Canal is a 120-mile artificial waterway connecting the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. Basically, it allows you to pass between the North Atlantic and Indian Oceans without having to sail around Africa. It's probably the most important waterway in the world. By March 28th, the Suez had a massive line of ships waiting to pass on either side. According to Lloyd's List, one of the world's oldest running journals, the Ever Given held up $9.6 billion worth of trade goods for every day it was stuck. That's about $400 million and 3.3 tons of cargo every hour, or nearly $6.7 million per minute. It took six days to get the Ever Given unstuck, but the damage was already done. But how did it get stuck in the first place? According to the Washington Post, a massive sandstorm on the 23rd battered the ship with heavy winds. Experts believe the stacked cargo containers acted like a sail and pushed the ship off course. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.